Hello. In this short presentation, I am going to address a common but important confusion related to literature review. I am going to talk about the difference between systematic review and document analysis. Before we begin to talk about the said topic, I must inform you that this presentation is not about how to conduct systematic review or document analysis. I will remain focused to address the basic difference between systematic review and document analysis providing some conceptual clarities in brief. However, after this presentation, I hope that you will be able to decide what kind of literature review method you are going to use as required by your study. I hope that most of you have a general idea what is literature review. Literature is the published or unpublished study material that may provide you textual material relevant to your study area. For example, studies based on empirical data analysis, studies based on analysis of secondary data, policy documents, textbooks, news reports, essays, diaries, documentaries, and several other types of data that you want to explore in connection with your study area is the literature. And review means to view, to inspect, and to examine a document. It means one way or other way, whenever you are examining some sort of document, you are involved in literature review. However, objectives and purpose of doing literature review and the way you are planning to analyze the literature that include the process of analysis may place your literature review in different types of literature review methods. Well, now let's see what is systematic review. Systematic review is defined as a type of literature review that attempts to identify, appraise and synthesize all the empirical evidence that meets pre-specified eligibility criteria to answer a given research question. <clears throat> this definition points out four major features of systematic review. First, there must be a specific research question that will determine the direction of your investigation. And investigation here means to seek answer to your specific research question through reviewing literature. Second, pre-specified inclusion and exclusion criteria that will help you to search, identify and screen the relevant literature to do systematic review. Often this criteria is described in detail in the form of a searching or selection protocol. Third is the literature that should provide you empirical evidence that you will examine to answer your research question. It means that in systematic review, usually the literature based on empirical data is recommended. Number four, the process of analysis must be rigorous and it should inform the reader your pathway to find answers to your research question while going through the selected literature. And you know that the literature you have selected may have varied methodological, theoretical and contextual dimensions. Sometimes the selected studies are not comparable in terms of methods of investigation or the context where these studies are conducted. Hence, your process of analysis must answer such complicated aspects of your systematic review. A systematic review may be quantitative such as meta-analysis, it may be qualitative such as meta-synthesis or a both. However, this is not the topic of this presentation, so now we will just uh, go ahead towards document analysis. Okay, and now the document analysis. Document analysis is a systematic procedure for reviewing and evaluating documents. So this is just a general definition of document analysis. When we say a systematic procedure, it means the document analysis requires the identification, selection and examination of documents through a properly described way. Documents to be used in document analysis may be public records such as policy documents, manuals 
or maybe personal records such as diaries, blogs, text messages, or they may be the documents that report physical evidence of something, such as books, articles, flyers, brochures. So you see, there is a variety of documents that you can use for document analysis. And of course, it depends on the objectives or requirement of your study that what type of document or documents you are going to use in your document analysis. Here, if you will look at the slide, there are several types of documents that you may find through different sources, such as libraries, archival records, public private institutions, newspaper offices, official websites, and other data repositories maintained by some authentic office or institute. It is always useful to use more than one document, uh, document type and more sources uh, in the document analysis. Uh, now coming back to the document analysis. Document analysis is often seen as content analysis of the documents. So you know that this is a form of descriptive quantitative analysis including text labeling, frequencies and pattern identifications. However, with the passage of time and the need of interpretation of the findings, researchers also find it useful to use qualitative content analysis of the documents wherever required. While doing qualitative analysis, researchers may use coding content into themes and other categories or may use a rubric to analyze the document. I mean with some predetermined themes or predetermined categories. Later, these themes and codes may be used to gain a quantitative insight in the form of frequencies and patterns. And the qualitative reflections may be used to interpret the findings or making inferences. Anyhow, qualitative content analysis always adds value to the systematic analysis of the document. Now let's see some differences between systematic review and document analysis. First, document analysis does not necessarily include a single specific research question. You may have a broader idea, objectives or overview of something that you want to explore in the documents. Second, inclusion and exclusion criteria and searching and selection of the documents does not require a specific protocol that we must use in systematic review. In document analysis, we can just describe the type of documents we need to do analysis and the sources that can provide us those documents. Third, our documents are not necessarily research articles with empirical evidence. As you have seen, there are several types of documents that can be used in document analysis. Okay, now I can give you one example uh, that may highlight this difference in a little bit more detail. For example, you want to examine the textbooks of social studies taught in, a prim in primary schools in your country. So your primary objective is to examine or evaluate the content of the textbooks. So you see, you don't require a prescribed search and select protocol for inclusion and exclusion of the documents. And it is pretty clear what kind of document you are going to study. Similarly, the source of these document is also clear. You don't have a single specific research question as well. And also the documents, I mean the textbooks in this example, they are easily available and that affects the cost and time you invest in searching, screening and selecting as you do in systematic review. So this process is more cost effective. Moreover, the documents are not affected by a research process or empirical data analysis and you are having a data, I mean the documents, that are unobtrusive and more stable and more broad. I hope with this example you may find a pretty clear difference between systematic analysis and the document analysis. Okay, thank you for watching. This is just a brief presentation to provide you some basic information regarding the difference between systematic review and document analysis. You can take it a kind of preliminary information 
that may help you to see what type of literature review you are intending to conduct in your research. I will come up with more details about the process of analysis uh, in systematic review and document analysis in another video. Stay in touch by subscribing my YouTube channel and you can also read the video scripts on childhoodreview.com. Thank you.